Welcome to Leaders Making a Difference, the podcast that dives into the stories behind the change makers. I'm your host, Jeannie Frazier, and together we'll have candid conversations that explore their challenges and celebrate their impact. Hello, and welcome to Leaders Making a Difference. I'm Jeannie Frazier, and today I'm here with Laura Lenchinsky from D2. Laura is just an amazing person who works for an independent minority and women-owned agency that works with not only nonprofits, but medical devices and the pharma industry. And she's just got some great value that she's here to share today. And in my work as president and CEO of VitalLink, we're a purpose-driven firm that serves nonprofits and orgs with challenging issues. We've actually partnered with D2 in the past to tackle housing insecurity issues. So I know that this lady has some heavy chops and can really bring some great information that can help our audience today. So let's take a step into the world of change makers with Laura and leaders making a difference. And we're going to learn how her work and our work is creating ripples of success and how you can use this in your own org. So, Laura, in a few sentences, can you tell us who you are, what you do, and what inspires you most about working with nonprofits? Thank you so much for that for that introduction. I'm Laura Linchitsky, Digital Marketing and Strategy Manager, as you said. My background in marketing really came from content creation. So I, I started my career right when content marketing was really uh, launching and and finding its grounding ground in the digital marketing world. So I I came from that background, uh, but then of course creating content you that can't really be your only hat these days in digital marketing. So I started to expand into SEO and into social media marketing, um, running campaigns and things like that. You have to become really a jack of all trades in digital marketing these days. Uh, what I like the most about working uh, with nonprofits is is the impact that you can see uh, directly helping people. It's it's very rewarding to to see that and to know that you're 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 really making a difference um, with people's lives. Um, and that's not to say that you're not doing that also with with medical device and pharmaceutical companies, but there's there's just something extra special about about nonprofit. That's great. I definitely agree. And I can tell that you got your start in content. I think no matter how good your SEO is and everything else, if you don't have that story in a compelling way, if you're not telling it in a compelling way, no matter what you do on the back end digitally is just not going to help as much. So tell us about maybe a common challenge you see that nonprofits face and, and how you would help solve that. Sure. Definitely in, in content creation. Um, with, these days with content, especially on social media, and if you are trying to rank higher with something, it, you're trying to play the quality and the quantity game at the same time. You Google and other search engines really prioritize websites that have fresh content and content that really plays by its rules and features the keyword that you're trying to rank for pretty uh, pretty heavily and frequently. Um, and on social media with some platforms, they recommend posting multiple times a day. Uh, Instagram, I think, is um, between three and five times a day, but no more than nine if you even want to rank organically um, or try to grow organically. So there's definitely a challenge of how do you allocate resources to create that content? How do you know that your content is going to be resonating with the people that you, you want to see it um, and that you're not just making content for the sake of it? Because that can really have a do really do more harm than good if you're trying to stretch your resources too thin and then your content's really not doing it for you. So how would you measure that and, and see if your content is working? What kind of metrics would you look at? Sometimes a, a lot of times with content marketing, uh, it's the needle moves pretty slowly. Um, we like to see organic growth over time. Um, organic growth on social media could mean more follow more followers. It could also mean an increase in engagement in your content. So if you're posting four times a month, but you're getting mediocre engagement, when suddenly you make a little bit more effort and you're posting four or five times, but the posts are more robust, maybe you can see a, a dramatic increase in how many people are liking or commenting or sharing your content, which can affect your bottom line even more than just posting for the sake of posting. For organic SEO, 
what we like to do is come up with a, a short term and also a long term strategy and then implement those short term changes and see how how it moves the needle. Uh, and then with SEO, we are able to scan the website and look to see if there's more opportunity to to include keywords throughout. Or we could also look to see how pages are changing in what they rank for. Uh, so we can measure the the efforts uh, that we're putting in and make sure that that it's getting the return that we want. So Laura, Google seems to be sometimes a moving target. They change their algorithm. Is there anything new that's come up that a nonprofit should be aware of when they're working on their SEO? Absolutely. The the one thing that I would want every as many people to know as possible is Chat GPT and the the dangers of using chat GPT if you're trying to increase your ranking on things, because Google and other search engines are sophisticated enough, enough to know when your content has been generated by a bot. So without that human touch, um, your content is going to be considered to be spam. And if you think that you're putting out co content um, to rank higher, but it's been generated by a bot, then Google's going to know. So the Google's other... using their own AI basically to check and see if you're using AI. So it still needs, even if you want to use chat GPT to get started, you still need to put your own spin on it and change it exactly. up enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. The other big change with, with Google as of late is the transition from Google Universal Analytics to GA4. And that's in tracking uh, the traffic to your website, where it's coming from and how people are engaging with content on your site. The, uh, as of July 1st, that switch happened of 2023. So there have been some adjustments that I think are um, a little little quirks that we've had to um, to to get used to. Uh, the number one thing I would say it has actually been the bounce rate. Um, a lot of clients that we're seeing that that uh, are are tracking user activity, they will suddenly see big dips in the bounce rate, and they'll think, "Oh, wow, my my site's doing really well." But it's because uh, Google has changed the way that it's tracking things like that. So if somebody's on your site for more than ten seconds, um, if they are looking at more than one page, Google considers them to be engaged, and then they will count them as an engaged session instead of a bounce. So bounce rates since July first have tended to be better, but they're more um, Google is at least saying that they're a better accurate representation of the actual engagement that's going on on the site. Yeah, if you're clicking to another page, you've got to have some intent. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So thinking about your works with nonprofit, I want to dig a little bit deeper into maybe like a really meaningful client for you. If you could tell us about that nonprofit, what they do, who they serve and their challenge and then then I'm going to we want to talk about your approach and the rest of that afterwards. But tell me a little bit about that nonprofit and why they were special to you. D2 and, and Vitalink collaborate together uh, to to support um, Enlivian, which is the Housing Authority of Mecklenburg County, North Carolina. They have a number of residents already, and they offer a lot more services than just housing. But a lot of residents were not aware of that. So this was an awareness campaign to their current residents that would let them know of the other services that, that were available to them. Um, and that, to me, is, um, is a very meaningful... Um, campaign goal in and of itself of just how can we continue helping the people that we're already helping and how can we continue to support them and make sure that they're not just residents, but that they're them and their families are thriving. That's amazing. Looking at who you serve and not just whether it's always raising money or things along those lines, which can be important, not saying mm -hmm. that. So um, I also hear that have you done a little work with um, the Katherine Johnson Foundation and how, that has yes. a connection with NASA? That that was that was very special um, for for me. We we were putting together a website for the the Katherine Johnson Foundation that was going to be a a telling of Katherine Johnson's life story, essentially, of something that you you wouldn't necessarily know if you just maybe watched the movie Hidden Figures, which she was a, the main character of. Um, but getting to know her as a person beyond her accomplishments at NASA, beyond her character in the movie. So I interviewed her, her, her two daughters and um, some colleagues that she worked with at NASA. And I, I read her memoir and I really I feel like I really got to know her of who she was. And so writing her story was was so special, so special for me. I, I really enjoyed that opportunity. That's just phenomenal. I mean, women doing great things for a long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being that African-American 
you know, making history and what they did. It just, that one to me gives me chills. So thank you for sharing that. Um, going back to Enlivian, so could you tell us maybe how you approach that challenge of letting residents know more about the services and um, how did how did you use those digital tools to accomplish that? The biggest challenge that we encountered was in the targeting because we wanted to make sure that the people who are seeing the ads are current residents. So how we handled that was using geo-targeting tactics to make sure that the residents where they lived were going to be the ones who were seeing the ads. And then from there, we used a bunch of different tactics to make sure that no matter what type of media that they engaged with, whether it was their connected TV, if they're on YouTube, if they are streaming audio, uh, if they are um, just on the internet, but they've been on the Olivian website before. So a bunch of different tactics, um, we would still make sure that we're able to target them with with advertisements. That's great. I know that we went through a lot in that planning process to make sure no matter the tactic that that targeting was right online so that we were efficient. And uh, then I love about digital, you're able to monitor it. And you can really mm -hmm. look at your results and see what's working. So what do you think is the number one issue that you encounter in your work with nonprofits? There can be a lot of red tape that would maybe hold up a project. Um, even with the best of intentions, you of course need to have the right people to say yes to 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 the project. Um, and sometimes it is an easy path to to a yes, but but not always. Um, and especially when you're you're trying to maybe chase some trends or like on social media when you need to come up with content pretty quickly, um, that can be especially challenging. Hmm. What do you think is working to communicate a nonprofit's value to either potential donors or let's say in the case of like an Olivian residence or, you know, people they serve? What's um, what's working? Definitely using people in, in your content, especially when you're uh, if you're on your website and you're just seeing pictures of your your headquarters or something like that. That doesn't really necessarily convey what you do. Using people who look like the people that you help and they're in that state of they've they've already reaped the benefits of, of this service. They're they're happy, they're thriving. Um, being able to have those kinds of visuals on your website and throughout your content, people can really see themselves in in those kinds of images. Um, testimonials also work wonders too. Just having somebody who is, has been in your situation and has come out the other side and is 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 all the better for it is just giving this very positive endorsement. I think that 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 makes such a big difference. I love it. Do you think it, would you also recommend to feature people who work in the nonprofit and and let um, those they serve get to know them a little bit more? Yes, and that that can also help build up the the thought leadership among people that work in in, in nonprofits too. Um, they become these very trusted authorities, uh, and it can be easier for people to to ask for help when they know that the person that they're asking for help is going to be able to provide it and provide it well. That's great. Yeah. Sometimes it just matters if you know someone, I think also that it makes you more comfortable to be able to ask a question if you feel like there's someone there you could talk to. So, um, right. yeah, digital's, I think, just an incredible tool and trackable and it's changed basically how everybody does media. You know, it used to be newspapers were king and, you know, now TV and digital and social. But what do you see that's new in digital that could help nonprofits get better results? Hmm. I think that there's interesting opportunity in social media, but it can be, social media can be kind of a, a minefield sometimes. I think that um, certain platforms like like TikTok, for example, they can have a very, um, like a sarcastic tone or um, very, not serious, like ironic, sort of interesting humor um, that doesn't always mesh with brands. So um, it will be interesting to see how that tr how that translates in the in the near future, because as more people are on social media, how can brands adapt so that they're speaking the language of the people who are on those platforms, but are still being true to to their brand and their voice? 
Yeah. So, you know, we know that digital's got some great power and is very trackable. How do you think nonprofits should handle other mediums that, um, you know, some may consider less effective or, you know, how are they working with it? How would you have them look at their overall mix? Definitely tracking is, is very important. Um, it's, it's really vital to, to look at the efforts that you're putting in and making sure that in the short term and in the long term, they're actually moving the dial for you or moving the, the needle in the right direction. Um, for that, we, you could do something as manual as going into the different platforms where you're, where you're publishing content or where you're running ads and looking at them, uh, side by side. You could also put together some kind of dashboard that feeds in real time data from all of the platforms that you're working with. And so you could see everything side by side, but whatever, whatever it is that you're doing, you want to be consistent. Um, and you want to just make sure that it's actually getting you the, the results that you want and, I would also say, don't be afraid to kill your darlings, as we say in writing. Um, if just because you've put a lot of effort into something doesn't mean that you have to continue with it, I'd say. So if you were testing a, maybe a different channel or you were testing a message and it's really not working out, you know, don't be afraid to ax it. Yeah, we had an education org that we worked with some years ago that had six people employed and was in the multi six figures to produce a print publication. And people didn't read it. And all the mm. research that they found out was that people weren't reading it. They were going online. It was outdated before it was printed. And it was really hard for them to let go of that piece because that's how they'd always done business. So that's great advice to be able to really look at things with, you know, with clear eyes and understand. Um, what do you, what kind of ROI do you think a nonprofit could expect with digital? It can really vary. Um, if you're just trying to raise awareness, then uh, looking at what kind of impressions you're getting, the reach that you're getting. Um, in the case of Inlivian, though, that that's sort of what we want and what we don't want, because we do want people to see it, but we want the right people to see it. So it it's this is also where clearly defining your objectives and your goals and what you're considering success uh, doing all of that upfront work is going to set you up better for success. So figuring out what is the actual, um, what's called, what's considered to be a conversion for you. Is it that somebody sees your ad? Is it that there's, there's brand lift, a uh, brand recall lift? Um, is it that people are clicking and going to the website? Is it that they're filling out a form because they want to get more information? Is it that they're donating money? So being very specific in defining what's going to be considered to be success here. And then you can directly look at that and say what is contributing to that and what's not. That's amazing. I think, you know, setting up those smart goals, I think probably everybody has looked up and seen that, that, you know, smart, measurable, you know, time intensive, uh, you know, that you're, you're looking at things through a lens where you're measuring the right things is so important. So what other action do you think that our audience could implement to help solve one of their ongoing problems? Let's say it's an image or awareness problem. What do you think they could do one thing to do that would really help them? I think that this is also a general problem with content of um, sometimes people create the content that they think is going to be important, but it's not necessarily the content that is actually going to resonate with people. So I would say to when you're coming up with campaigns, when you're coming up with messaging, um, to not do that in a vacuum, to to talk to the people who are going to be impacted, whether you're doing like a, a mini focus group or if you're just interviewing some people, or even if you're just interviewing people outside of your core marketing team, but just don't do it in a vacuum because then that's when you're creating content just for the sake of it and then it falls flat. That's great. Thanks so much. So to also help our listeners, our viewers, what is one valuable free resource that you could direct people to that would help further their efforts and why? I mean, I know for many, many years and still even sometimes you'll find someone who doesn't have the free tool like Google Analytics on their website. I mean, that one's like a simple because it's free and you're able to really look at who's coming into your website, what path are they taking, all those kind of things. But is there another free, valuable resource that they could use that could really be helpful to them. 
Well, of course, I'll plug um, some of the content that we put out as an agency uh, on our website, d2creative.com. We have some white papers and uh, blog articles and things like that that specifically speak to issues that marketers face now, including a a white paper on the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic on the medical device markets and digital marketing tips for the medical device industry. But then, of course, uh, aside from aside from the content that we put out, there is, of course, Google Analytics. Google does have a lot of tools that are that are available to um, to help enable additional marketing success. I also personally use Google's Google Ads is keyword ad planner quite a bit. Um, which is free when you have an account, just to um, run your website through it to get some keyword ideas. It could also help with coming up with some long tail keyword ideas. So if there's something very broad, like cancer patients, that might be something hard to to crack into organically. But if you're adding a long tail to it, like cancer patient resources um, for you know, and you're including a very specific type of cancer, like that might be easier to come up with a content strategy around that so that you can break into that that keyword and rank higher on your site. Great. I love that. We'll put uh, make sure to put that website resource up on the screen so everybody can get that and check out the white papers. I think COVID really did um, highlight some challenges across all types of industries. And I think it shined a light on some health equity issues. So, you know, I'd be interested to read that white paper. I'll, I'll go take a look at that as well. <laughs> but thanks also for, you know, giving a little deeper look into how you can use Google. I think you had mentioned before to the um, dashboards and dashboards are something that people can, if they're talented and techie enough, can do themselves or they could have their partner work with. Um, mm-hmm. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with the audience today that you think might be helpful for them? I think that uh, one thing that I haven't explicitly mentioned is is video content. Um, video has been um, such a a growing preferred medium for people. Um, emails, for example, that have videos in it can get as much as a 300% bump in in clicks. So including things like video in, in emails or where they're maybe not traditionally utilized can help increase engagement just because people like seeing videos. Um, videos are, of course, also very popular on social media. So having more video content, again, it's hard to, to produce video, um, but making video content uh, video creation, a part of your your content strategy, I think is going to be exceptionally critical. Um, and then also doing it in a way where the videos are um, are telling a story that, especially if it's a very complicated topic, that it's conveying the information in a way that people can understand it, and then they can walk away from the video thinking, oh, okay, I know what I know what it was trying to say, and I know what I want, what I should be doing next. That's amazing. And that's a great way to end. I really thank you for your time today and sharing your stories and your knowledge and just the depth of the work that you've done with D2 is pretty amazing. So um, I think, you know, everybody on Leaders Making Making a Difference is so thankful to have you here. And we hope this information helps those out there who are looking to really work on their outreach strategies. And I would just ask you to join us again on our podcast as we share stories of other change makers who are making a difference in the world.